Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Charity. And I'm Ben. And in 2018, we bought our very first RV and set off to travel the United States with our family. In today's video, we will be going over tips for buying and selling RVs. Exactly, and we invite you to give this video a thumbs up and make sure that you hit that subscribe button. We've got a lot more fun videos that are going to be coming out in the next coming weeks and months, and so you want to make sure that you get notified every single time a new video releases. Don't forget to hit that bell. Ring the bell. So let's jump right into today's video where we're going to give you some tips on whether you're considering buying your first RV or maybe your second or third, <laughs> or maybe you're considering selling your RV. So it has been a very interesting year in 2020 with COVID and with everything that has happened in our country. And because of that, a ton of people have decided to take up RVing. When COVID did first hit, we were so so thankful <laughs> that we had an RV because just being able to be self-contained and have our own bathroom on board and even with fuel stops not even really having to do much as far as interacting with other people by using yeah. truck stops it really was a great way to be able to still travel to be able to still see the great United States but to still stay Isolate. socially distant and isolated yeah. only thing we really needed was a glove for the gas pump. <laughs> exactly, and so there's been a ton of other people that have made this same realization that RV life might be something they want to give a try. And so maybe you are considering buying an RV. So we're gonna talk about some things to think about if you're purchasing an RV, but maybe you bought an RV this year or maybe you've been RVing for a while and you're ready to move up to something different. Upgrade. So what we have found is that a lot of people will purchase their very first RV. They get their feet wet, they have a ton of fun, but they find out some things along the way. Yeah, and a lot of times you'll find out that, hey, this RV is not big enough for our family, or I don't like the way this RV drives. Like that's what we did. We had a gasoline, a 2000 pace arrow, and we were gung ho to get in and start RVing. Come to find out after traveling you know, across the country that it's a little rough to ride in. So we wanted something a little more smooth and easier to drive and not as fatiguing. So this is how we ended up with this guy. And so maybe you're in a similar situation where it's kind of the end of camping season, it's winding down and you're realizing, well, maybe versus you know putting this RV that we have into storage, since I'm maybe thinking about getting something different Anyway, maybe I should just put it up for sale. So we've got some tips for you in this video also on how to sell your RV and how to get top dollar for maybe that RV that you're considering selling. So you wanna make sure you watch until the end because we've got some really good tips on how to market your RV to be able to get top dollar for it if selling is something you're considering. And then also make sure that you check out the video above for drivable versus towable, where we kind of highlight some of the differences between RVs that you can drive like a motor home or RVs that you would tow like a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. Okay, first let's talk about buying an RV. This can be a huge investment. Exactly, you're going to most likely spend multiple thousands of dollars on an RV and so it's something that you want to consider carefully but you also want to do the very best that you can to make sure that you're purchasing the right RV for the right price. Here's a few things to consider when buying an RV. One thing that you wanna think about is how often are you going to use your RV? Are you going to be going full time and completely living in it 24 seven, 365? Are you going to be more of a weekend warrior where you're going to be going out on those long weekends with the family? Do you see yourself doing summer the whole summer where maybe you're going out like we do in the summer months and you're spending the whole entire summer traveling in your RV. How much time that you think that you're going to use, it's really gonna dictate how much space that you need. If you're taking your whole entire household and you're going full time, you probably wanna have a few more storage options in your RV if you're completely gonna move your house into your RV versus if you're just gonna be more of a weekend warrior, you don't really need all of the things that you might need if you were going to go full time. Plus you'll wanna see what kind of layout is gonna best suit 
suit your family. There's a ton of different types of layouts for each model of RV. So you want to make sure you take a look at those layouts and plans on the websites. And that brings us to our next tip, and that is to visit dealerships. That's a great way to be able to look at those layouts and get an idea of floor plan. One thing that we learn pretty quick with kids is thinking about where are they going to sleep in relation to how far away or how close are they to where we're sleeping. And that's something to consider when you're looking at those floor plans and at those layouts. So definitely visit your local RV dealership yes. and take a look at the different options that are available. So should you buy new or used? So we personally have always purchased used. And the reason for that is for us, it makes financial sense. We personally don't want to take the hit in depreciation that comes from purchasing a newer RV. So we've always chosen to purchase used and try to get it where that depreciation, the large hit that usually happens during the first five-ish years has already happened. And we're not having to absorb that hit. There are some pros and cons to consider when buying buying new versus used. The pros of buying a used RV, one of them is you can save a significant amount of money. Exactly. That depreciation hit that we talked about, you don't have that. The other thing is things like insurance are most likely going to be cheaper. The cost of licensing is going to be cheaper. But one of the things that we're looking forward to with this RV and we did with our last RV too is Reno. RV Reno. So make sure, again, you're subscribed. We're going to have some really fun RV Reno videos coming out this winter on this guy right here. Tearing it apart. So purchasing used versus new really opens up that door to be able to renovate, redecorate, make and really own. make it. Oh, I stole your words. Sorry about that. <laughs> Moving right along. The pros of buying new is that you get the latest tech the latest backup cameras and the GPS technology. There's also really cool technology on some of the RVs that just have like a whole system monitoring type of thing where you can, you know, kind of constantly monitor all of the systems inside of the rig. Built-in Wi-Fi system. Built-in sound systems, entertainment systems. 5.1 surround sound. Televators. Let's talk about the televators, right? <laughs> Those are super cool too. So one of the things if you buy new, you can get all of the latest tech and all of the latest bells and whistles as well. And one thing you don't have to worry about is the wear and tear on the vehicle. Nobody's been through it. Nobody with kids have put their mark on the RV. Especially children that put their marks on RVs. <laughs> Whether you're buying used or new, you want to make sure you count the cost. So make some phone calls to your insurance company and find out what is insurance going to run you per year on that RV. Also, what are the potential licensing fees to put license plates on it? And then if you're not going to go full time and you do need to store it, then you need to find out what storage costs will run. And a lot of times the size of the RV can dictate those storage costs. So if you have, say, a 40-foot motorhome, for example, like we do, it might cost more to find a space that will accommodate that versus if you have, say, a 18-foot travel trailer. So you want to make sure that you're considering the costs before that you make that purchase. And don't forget maintenance. You want to go ahead and just jot down any type of maintenance, whether it's tires and oil changes, and just so you have an idea of what you're going to spend on your new or used RV. Anything with wheels is going to require maintenance. So that's definitely something you want to factor into your overall cost of ownership. One thing that we highly recommend you do if you do purchase used is to always, always, always hire an RV inspector. Exactly. Somebody that's an actual certified RV inspector is going to know the ins and outs and the things to look for. One of the biggest problems that any RV owner that's done this for a while is going to tell you is constantly problematic is water, water leaks. <laughs> Water intrusion in an RV is one of the top issues that can happen. And it's also one of the top maintenance needs yeah. as far as keeping things sealed. Recently, 
I talked to an RV mobile tech that came out to fix one of our items in our rig and I asked him what was one of the most common things you see with RVers you know because you see a lot of different rigs and the one thing that he said he sees the most often is people will not maintain their roof and they have little leaks coming in here or there and they don't know where they're coming from so they'll focus on the inside stuff or renovating but they don't start from the roof first. Always start from the roof, check the roof, have the roof inspected by an RV inspector. So now maybe you're one of those people that is considering selling your RV. So let's jump right in to tips for how to sell your RV and how to get top dollar for the RV that you're selling. Most RVers that we have spoken to that chose to purchase used or even new in some situations tell us all the time that we drove to this state or we flew to this place to be able to pick up this RV. So you want to be able to market it in a national sense. So utilizing online platforms that reach an audience nationwide is absolutely essential to be able to reach as many people as possible. And that also helps you to be able to get top dollar for your RV if you have more prospective buyers. Another great way to market your RV online is through Facebook groups that are specifically designed for people buying and selling RVs. You can put a link directly to your listing on maybe RV Trader or RVT.com, as well as just put up the description of the RV with the photos that you're putting up. Now we got our RV for a really great yeah. deal. And that was because the people that we purchased it from didn't know how to market it. And all they did was list it on Facebook Marketplace. Jesus, what was that? Some kind of large bug. All they did was list it on Facebook Marketplace in their local area, <laughs> not even funny. <laughs> that really narrowed down the potential pool of buyers that they had. In fact, we looked at it and we decided to keep looking yeah. for two months. Yeah, there weren't a lot of pictures. There was a couple pictures. I had to actually ask them for more pictures. So they sent them to me. And so after looking for some other RVs, two months later, we contacted them back to see if they still had it for sale and they it's did. Still available. Because again, they didn't have a very large pool of buyers in this small town in Colorado where it was really only being marketed on a local level. And so we picked it up for a really great deal just because they didn't have that large pool of potential buyers, which meant they didn't have any offers other than ours. Another big tip is good pictures. These days, you can do a lot with your iPhone or Android phone, but the biggest thing you wanna do is have good lighting. So if you're taking pictures inside your RV, open it up, open the windows, and have a lot of good lighting. And take pictures of everything that you would want in an RV. So if there's a washer and dryer, a GPS, a backup camera system, any kind of tech that may be compelling, to a potential buyer, include that in the photos. You cannot have too many photos. Exactly, and if there's any, you know, fun little storage spaces that your RV has that are a little bit, you know, different, make sure that you highlight those in the photos too. Make sure you take a picture of the tires, the tread, how much is left, the DOT code on the tires so they know how old the tires are. And you want to make sure that as you're taking pictures of the interior of the rig, that those pictures aren't cluttered. Don't take a picture of the bedroom where there's a ton of clutter clothes all over the bed or boxes on the bed or things all in the dinette. You want them to look like you would if you're scrolling through Instagram per se. So as you're taking those photos, think about, are these photos Instagram-esque? Is that a new word? That is a new word. I like it. Instagram-esque photos. <laughs> Another tip is to make sure you keep those maintenance records. You want to have them available for any potential buyer. Exactly. I come from a background in the automotive industry and because of my background, especially on the service side in the automotive industry, I am a stickler for maintenance. I keep our vehicles maintained. I make sure that this stays maintained and I keep constant records. I have large files of all of the maintenance records, whether it's a part that was purchased, a service that was performed, even a call from a mobile service tech, I keep all of those receipts and records to be able to hand over to a prospective owner 
if and when we ever choose to sell our rig. And what this does is it shows that you've maintained the vehicle properly. You've had oil changes done. You don't want to inherit somebody else's headache. Knowing that that RV has been maintained properly can really provide a prospective buyer peace of mind and help you get top dollar. It is what it is. Another tip for selling is to be sure you disclose anything wrong with the RV and take pictures of anything that might be a blemish within inside or outside of your RV. Exactly, honesty is always really the best policy when selling anything, whether an RV or a home or anything at all really. And the last thing that you want is a potential buyer to show up and look at the RV and find out that maybe there was something they didn't know about and then they start asking themselves, well, what else is this right. buyer potentially hiding? So disclosure is always the best policy, especially if you know that there's something that might stand out or that an RV inspector for sure is gonna run across. It's best to just disclose that up front so that everybody is in the know that that thing is present within the RV. A lot of times it's best to privately sell your RV because you'll get the most bang for the buck. But there are other options that may be a more stress-free route, including consignment. There are tons of RV dealerships that will take RVs in on consignment. Now, if they're consigning it, they're gonna help kind of do some of this marketing for you. A lot of them will have detail services where they'll do all of the cleaning for you as well. PPL Motorhomes, which we'll put a link to in the description below, does a ton of consignments. Now, they are located in Texas, so you will have to take your RV to them, but they have a great reach nationwide. There's a ton of people that come to them to purchase used RVs, and they take care of pretty much the whole process for you, and you don't have to worry about any of that sales process and they can handle that. We would love to know your thoughts and if you have any tips or experiences when buying or selling an RV. So please drop your comments down below and just let the community know any advice that you may have or any experiences that you've had. The RV community is so great the way that everybody kind of just pulls resources together and shares. So make sure that you leave a comment below letting us know your experience or some other buying and selling tips that maybe we left out of this video to be able to help other RVers in the RV community. That's all for now, and we'll see you out there. Bing! You're gonna edit that out later. Okay, absolutely. Oops, you're getting hair in your mouth and stuff. There. People will actually just rent to see what kind of RVs is gonna be. We're not talking be. about renting in this video. Oh, we're not? No, this is tips for buying, buying and, selling. and selling. Oh, never mind. And then there's a plane. Put together a little spreadsheet and, and you know, kind of put the pros and cons and... Spreadsheets? Yeah. Water Where? leaks. Oh, yeah, say it again, ready? One, two, three. Water, Water leaks. leaks. <laughs> You'll... Bleh, don't look at the camera. You'll... New. You got a white thing on your left. Okay. Effective buyer, a peace of mind. Wow. Make it look amazing.